All right, let me turn my attention now to the bicycle question. The, the bicycle question was really neat. Uh, it involves you pulling the pedal kind of horizontally with a string. Which way does the bicycle go? I, I will be honest, this question gave me a hard time. I, I thought about it long and hard before I reached the point of thinking that I feel I have a good understanding of it. Uh, tell me, explain it. I've actually created an interactive physics simulation of it. Uh, this is the program that I like to use a lot when I'm, when I'm teaching. So here is a ridiculously simple, sorry it's not cosmetically pretty, but I wanted to do this in a hurry, so this is going to be my model representing a bike. Uh, consider this to be the, uh, the front tire, consider this to be the back tire. Uh, this would be the, uh, the, 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 the pedal, the, 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 the crankshaft, I guess. Uh, this represents, I don't know, the handlebars or something like that. It's, it's really simple, not very pretty, sorry. Okay, let me show you how this works, though, because I, I did take some time to get at least key elements of it correct. So if I run the simulation right now, the program is working, nothing's happening. It's just a bike that's sitting there. Uh, at least I have the advantage of it's not going to fall over. Okay, now, part of this really, really involves getting the pedals correct. So let me show you what happens if I grab a force, which is sitting right, ah, yeah, there it is. Uh, if I grab, oh, I don't know, let's just say I grab like the frame of the bike or the, the handlebars or something like that, and I push it, oh, there we go, that's right, push the handlebars to the right with a force. So this is not the question that we're addressing, but uh, it's really important you understand this. So if I press run now, I'm pushing the bike forward, the bike will indeed move. Now. The pedals, which I don't have the pedals literally shown, but the, the, the handle on which the, the pedals would remain are, are in there. And I want to, want to be very clear about something. Right now, I have it set up so that the gear ratio between the, the pedal crank and the rear wheel is one to one. That means that it would take my, my tire one full revolution uh, in the exact same time that it would take my uh, crankshaft of my pedals to rotate one full revolution. You can actually see that here. Uh, right now, the, the the radius of the circle is, is horizontal. Notice that my my uh, crankshaft is, is vertical. I don't know if that's the correct term, but I'm going to use it. Uh, and if I run the simulation, notice that when my, my pedal crankshaft rotates exactly 90 degrees, like right about there somewhere, uh, the, the wheel has made, again, exactly one quarter of a revolution. So it's a one-to-one -one gear ratio. That's, that's going to be important because this is a complicated question. All right, now, let, let me show you what the actual premise of the question is. The question was we tie a string to the bottom pedal and we pull it backwards. I'm thinking this bike is facing to the right, so I have to pull that pedal backwards to the left. So let me grab uh, that same force vector. There it is. Uh, grab the bottom pedal and essentially apply a force on it to the left. Close enough. Okay, so the question is which way will the bike move? Here's the answer according to my simulation. So I press run. Uh, the bike actually goes backwards. Yep, I'm pushing the bike backwards and the bike goes backwards. Uh, but here's a really neat thing. Notice that, of course, the pedal is rotating because it's geared to the tire. The pedal is rotating in the backwards direction, but this is the important bit. Notice that the pedal, I'll do it again, notice the pedal actually does move backwards with respect to the earth. We're pushing it backwards, the bike goes backwards, the pedal goes backwards, everything goes backwards. Simple. Now, some people might say, that's it, that's the end of this question. The bike moves backwards. Some people are, have done it with an actual bicycle and say, look, there's the answer, it goes backwards. Whoa, hold on there. This is more complicated. This is, this is the element that, that really made me think hard. The question that is, uh, would it be the same answer for any gear ratio? Right now I have a gear ratio of one to one. Okay, so again, 90 degree rotation here corresponds with a 90 degree rotation of the tire. Of course, real bikes don't necessarily have that gear ratio. Of course, a lot of bikes, you can change that gear ratio. So I actually have that as part of my simulation. I have a, it was hidden until now, but I'll kind of pull it out right here. Here's a control I have for the gear ratio. And it's set right now for a one-to-one. -one. Uh, as I make this number higher, for example, if I make this uh, 10, this is now a 10 to one gear ratio, which means that my, uh, my pedal would have to spin around basically 10 full revolutions in the time that it would take my tire to make one revolution, 10 to one. So let me take this force off for a second here. Let's go back to what I had initially, just showing you if I push the bike to the right by grabbing the frame. So if I just grab the bike and push it to the, you know, to the right, forwards, let's call it, uh, the bike goes forwards and notice how quickly that uh, crankshaft of the pedals turns. 
I'm not even counting off here, but uh, in the time roughly that my tire made a quarter of a revolution, one-fourth, uh, it should have taken the, uh, the, the crankshaft there ten times the one-quarter, so ten over four, I guess, two and a half revolutions. I wasn't keeping track, but I'm pretty sure that's what it did. Okay, now here's the question. With this much greater gear ratio, am I going to get the same outcome if I push the pedal again as per the original question? I push it backwards or pull it backwards with a string. So here is the outcome for a 10 to 1 gear ratio for this particular configuration. So I'm going to run this and uh, watch what happens. Ah, okay, now that was quicker, of course, but let, let me show it to you again. This time, when you pull the pedal backwards, the bike actually did move forwards. That was different than the first time I showed it to you. Uh, why? Why did it go the other way? Well, here's kind of a, a simplified way of thinking about it. Notice again, if I press run, uh, which way this pedal that I'm pulling, I'm pulling it backwards, uh, look at which way it moves, like with respect to the earth. It, it again goes backwards. I pull the pedal backwards, the pedal goes backwards. Which way does the bike go? Well, that's more complicated. That depends on the gear ratio. If the bike would move more one way or more the other way, depending on that. It's, it's a little hard to see it with my simulation, but let me try to show you uh, with an actual bike, because yes, I can do this with a real bike. Luckily, I biked to work today, so I can show you with my bike. So here is the exact setup that we're talking about. Bike is facing forwards, the lower pedal has a string tied to it, it's balanced on its own because I haven't quite mastered real two-wheel bicycling yet, and the question is if I pull the string this way, which way does the bike go in response? Well, let's just look at it and see what happens. Pull string backwards, and there you have it. Bicycle moves backwards. But have a close look at the pedal itself. For the gear ratio that we have here, the point that I'm applying force to, okay, if I just kind of get this in set here, the point that I'm applying force to, if I kind of just mark it here, when I pull my string backwards, notice the which way that pedal goes. That pedal goes in the direction that I'm pulling it. As a result, the bike moves backwards, but the pedal moved in the same direction that I pulled it. Actually, the bike did too, but it doesn't have to. Let me show you a slightly different arrangement to show you what I mean. Give me a sec. All right, to make my point more clearly, here's a slightly different version of the setup. Rather than pulling with a string, with, uh, you know, as before, I've actually taped a long stick just to kind of give me more length on that, uh, that crankshaft. So here's the deal. Since I can't adjust the literal gear ratio with gears, I can still give myself a varying mechanical advantage, let's call it, by applying forces at different points on this extended lever now. So watch what happens when I pull here, the same point that the string was applied a moment ago. If I just pull here, we get exactly the same outcome. The bike comes towards me. But here's the neat part. Have a look at that stick as I move it back and forth. Uh, it kind of moves through an arc, and there is a pivot point somewhere that is not really moving left nor right from the point of view of the camera. That point is somewhere I would estimate around here somewhere. Now, here's the neat part. If I were to pull on this part with a string or with my hand, I don't want to break my tape here, but here's the thing, it's not going to go anywhere. If I pull above that point, it will come towards me with the bike rolling backwards. But if I apply that force below that pivot point, anywhere below, watch what happens. The bike does go forwards. But notice still that the point that I'm applying force to is moving towards me being on the lower end of that pivot point. By the way, think of the um, consequences if it were to be anything else. If I were pulling with a string up here, if somehow the bike did go forwards while I was pulling with a string backwards, we would have a bit of a problem because I would be applying a force this way and the point that I'm applying the force to would be moving the other way. That would mean that I'm doing negative work, which should mean that I'm extracting energy from this arrangement, and yet I would be supposedly giving it kinetic energy.
Yep, it's true. If, uh, if the bike were to have gone forward in the original setup, uh, in the original setup, if the bike had gone forward with our pulling backwards, we'd be violating the law of conservation of energy. That's a problem.